Alright, hello everybody. Welcome to another deck highlight video. Today we are going to be looking at the new season pass card Loki. He's a 3-5 with the on reveal replace your hand with cards from your opponent's starting deck and then give them minus one cost. Uh, this card is a very powerful card. I have used it a decent amount since it came out. Uh, the big things that you should note immediately from this card are uh, it's a 3-5, so it has the same body as Polaris and Spider-Man, which are just good cards strictly because you're getting a really good rate on the card. On top of that, the second thing you need to know with Loki is that the cost reduction is raw cost reduction. If you hit a one drop with that, it will be a zero cost card. So it doesn't function the same way that Quinjet and Sarah work, which is just something that's important to note. So when we're looking at this card, we're looking at how can we optimize it? So Loki's pulling cards from your opponent is based off of how many cards are in your hand. So we want cards that give us more cards in our hand, like Agent Coulson. I'm sure if you look at any other deck highlight video, Agent Coulson's in every other deck. He's a 3-4, so he's a pretty good rate, close to Loki, and he adds two cards to your hand that are also just good curve fillers in case you don't have Loki. So you can play him on three and just be fine because now you have a four and five drop to play in the future. Also in modes like Conquest, which we'll see, it makes it hard for your opponent because they don't know what uh, is in our output range since we just got two random cards that could be anything. Uh, then looking at the rest, uh, we have Moon Girl to also just give us a bigger hand. Crystal for consistency, also to give us a bigger hand. We can use her to find Loki. We can also use her with Loki to just get our hand bigger right before we play Loki. Uh, then we have other cards like Quinjet and Sarah. This is to emphasize the cost reduction. So my game plan is to play Loki on turn six into a limboed game, which means that I can have Sarah on five Quinjet whenever which means that any cost card that costs four or less will likely cost one, which means I can just blow up the board on turn seven, and it's kind of hard for your opponent to predict what you could be playing. Uh, then other cards, we have uh, Collector to obviously benefit from the massive hand swap. You can easily see in one turn Collector get like seven stats easily. Uh, so obviously you have to worry because he's in Shang range, but also if they're Shanging your Collector, you're doing something right. Like. Guess what, you have other cards that they should be worrying about more than your collector, most likely. Uh, we also have Bishop for the same reason, right? Uh, we're playing a lot of cards, so Bishop's also going to get pumped up very high. Uh, we have Dazzler. Once again, we're filling the board nine times out of 10 with this deck. So Dazzler will likely be a 3-8. Uh, so we just have a lot of very big cards that synergize well with Loki. And then we have Sentinel, he buffs Collector, he helps with Dazzler, he'll get cost reduced by Quinjet, and he'll also synergize with our last card, Hitmonkey. Hitmonkey is our contingency plan. He's our, but we didn't get Loki, so I guess we're playing for Hitmonkey. So uh, with Sarah down and Qu Quinjet in play most likely, uh, we'll have some pretty cheap cards in our hand that we can play with Hitmonkey to get a pretty big Hitmonkey and a pretty big Bishop going, which is... Uh, our backup plan if we don't find Loki. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts in this deck. From a just gut instinct, uh, you kinda need to be comfortable with every kind of deck if you wanna play this deck. So if you aren't a super comfortable player with every archetype, I would maybe lean on not getting Loki unless this is your way of learning how to play Loki. At the end of the day, it's your money. But I hope you guys enjoy this deck highlight video, and if you do, consider leaving a like and comment letting me know, and subscribe for more future videos. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Alright, hopping into the first game. Uh, we aren't doing Conquest, because it's early in the season, I tried to do a Conquest, I had a minute queue time with not finding anyone. Uh, so, well, that's fucking terrible. Eh, maybe that's fine though. Maybe... Maybe this is fine. Ah, that's tough. Tough for that guy. I can uh, I can magic that. Um. Yeah, so we're just gonna be doing normal ladder. I'm at like 78-ish or so. So you'll probably see me doing actual snaps uh, throughout the game. 
so you'll get to see when I think I should be snapping into these matchups. Um, uh, Hitmonkey isn't really the card I want to draw there. Are they going to rogue my Quinjet? Is that what's about to happen? Is this going to be a rogue into my Quinjet? Okay. I really thought they were about to be petty and rogue my Quinjet. Um, do I have any... Like, I've hit Monkey for an on reveal. I'm trying to think if I can utilize that at all. Uh, Coulson. Give me double Coulson, which would be good if I had Collector. I'm kind of drawing a bit of a dud hand right now, but. I mean, like, all we need is Crystal or Zare, and I feel like a hundred times more comfortable with this deck. That's a super sick variant, actually. How stupid is this? That would be three stuff. That would be like... I don't know if Moongrill into that is the right play. It doesn't feel like the worst play. It just also didn't necessarily feel like the most intelligent play. Um, I think I do this and this. Because this gives me the option to play these three on the next turn. Because even hit monkey with one card, this can be six powers. So it's like it's not negligible. Um, it's just not great. And then let's just see what they're playing out. Let us know what we should be playing around. Also, the Iron Man update comes out quicker than before, and it feels kind of weird, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I didn't even snap. He just, he just left. He, I'm assuming he knew that I had double Iron Man, and... Probably double hit monkey because I could have hit monkeyed here. Uh, I honestly was considering going collector hit monkey sentinel here to get two power on the collector. I don't think that was the right play, but it was a thought. All right, hopping into the second one. Yeah, the second one. Uh, we have a pretty good hand, we're just missing. I mean, we have a good just like collector hand right now, which is fine. Um, I'm assuming they're also running Loki based off that. Uh, yeah, I, I've heard a lot of people are running Cable with it uh, because they don't have Mirage, which I'm also just not running Mirage. Um, uh, this is a terrible set of locations. I literally don't even know what I do. Like, I have absolutely no idea. Um, I can crystal here, I guess. Like, ah, magic. Okay, I'm fine with him having played my magic. Pretty sure that's my magic. I mean, what pack does he have? I can't track his card packs, I guess. Um, play Dazzler, Hidden, I guess. And then we'll Sarah Limbo. <laughs> like, oh man, this is a tough... This is a tough hand. Or not even a tough hand, it's just like, it's tough to get into Morag, because I have to play cards into the middle location, so I get their effects. Next turn, I'll be able to play Bishop into Morag. Precisely when I wanted to. Okay. So...
I'll do that. No, I don't want to play Quinjet. How much is this? This is seven. So I don't want to play Quinjet. I want to play... Um, I want to play everything on turn seven. I'll snap back into him, because I think that my collector is going to get a lot of power. Unless he's, like, turning off Limbo, which is a choice he can make, I suppose. I suppose his deck... Yeah, he's not. Okay. Whatever. He pulled Orca from Nick Fury. Got it. Yeah, we're not... Hmm. Okay. So... We do this, we do this. Or we don't do that? This adds two cards. How does this work? This. How much power is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, ten, eleven. This beats that. Um, and this is four. So this will be eight. This will be six. So fourteen here. That goes up a bunch. I feel pretty good. Bang bang. That doesn't really matter. It's just a stat play. Yeah, there's no way he plays. It, that's Loki. Okay. Yeah. Easy. I mean, yeah, we played uh, almost 60 power, like 54 uh, power, I think. 53 power, um, which is just good. Like, if you can play spread 53 power, like that's insane, honestly. Alrighty, hopping into the next one. Uh, wow, we have some pretty good cards. Um, that's unfortunate, but also fine. Uh, we bishop on three in the throne room, probably. And then we crystal on four, probably over here, maybe in the throne room. I don't know. Listening, I just don't like it. <laughs> we still have magic available. Maybe if I say it a little bit louder. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, based off the fact that he played Electro, I think he has to have just some massive stuff here. Will I be able to play two cards? No. I don't think I'll be able to play two cards I get from his hand. Um, so I think I'm fine with doing that. I, I am... I will be very surprised if I can play multiple cards at a discounted rate. I will not be able to play multiple cards at a discounted rate. How you doing, Buttercup? Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Because your Shang ain't winning you this game, buddy. That's all I'm saying. Woo. You did it, Sandman. So proud of you. And yes, one of my video, like my two videos ago with Sandman, it's frick off. Everyone knows no one likes playing against Sandman. All right, having Loki in hand will always feel good. Oh, Asgard, what a fitting location for Loki. Um, also, the Conquest variant this season is Odin. It looks pretty good, honestly. I will say it's kind of annoying in my opinion that it's Odin because I think Odin has like really good variants already. So like, it's kind of like a meh for me, like cool, but also like, why'd you pick someone that already has good variants? Like Odin Sleipnir variants, I would say like, in my opinion is like one of the best. Oh, cool. <laughs> if you guys want to see some chaos, we're about to see some chaos, boys. Yeah, I mean, I'm not winning Asgard, so I probably should just play both over here. Nah, nah. Um, do I have Loki this turn? I probably Loki this turn. That's so weird that it gives him, it gives his cards, it gives his Loki cards his card back. Like, I know they're my cards. Oh, what a doll. What an absolute doll this guy is. Yeah, I snap into him. Oh, that's just my collector, too. That's, like, hilarious, actually. So you can tell... What are you doing? What? He running a zoo, Loki? Like, what? Hello? Bang, bang, bang. Alright, so we go that. <laughs> that. <gasps> we play all these cards out. We go you, and then we go you. And then we go you. And then we go you. No, no, that's wrong. Hold on. Go you. And then we go you. And then we go you here because that technically wins. <laughs> this is technically winning. Um, my collector is about to get absolutely yoked over here. Uh, how many? It's four. So this will go up to 9, 11, plus, so 15. They have to play 9 power, right? Yeah, I think I'm fine. Pretty confident I'm fine. <laughs> Feeling pretty good. God damn! <laughs> A zero four yellow jacket? Tell me more! I don't know what this deck is. Victory. Yeah, Loki mirror matches are just a lot of nothing happening. <laughs> but they're a lot of fun. Alright, hopping into what might be the final game. Yeah, probably the final game. I mean, we're not getting a better hand than that. Like, we're not going to get a better start, like, ever than this hand right here one two three curve like sheesh oh no that's supposed to be the third location but also oh that's so good <laughs> that's so good oh he got his mirage back wait hold on if i play mirage then i get his mirage <laughs> this is a great game he's in the mirage is gonna be eight power if i play it don't play your Mirage! Don't play it now! Give me the Mirage! 
Ah, oh, you son of a bitch. It's just lowest cost. Could be my sentinel. Oh, you lucky son of a gun. Um... an awkward scenario here. That's mine. These are both mine. I think I'm fine with throwing Sarah there. Um... This is just gonna be so awkward. Yeah, I think I Sarah. And I play these four cards here. Hit Monkey Bishop, Sentinel Mysterio. I think that's what I do. I, you have like one card from me left. Like I know you have like one card from me. Go that. I go that. I go this. And I go this. That fills the board. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So this is 12 power. Uh, so I'm adding 13 power middle. So I feel pretty good there. And this is the first card I played. So I go that, that, and then Mr. Okay. Right, it's Mr. Yep. Um, and then, so I'm up here six, I'm up here thir 17, <laughs> and then I'd be one, two, three, four, five, so this is six, plus three is nine, minus four, <laughs> or minus three, eh, it'll be close, it'll be close in Jotunheim, but I'm up everywhere else. Oh shit, I forgot the plus two carries. I always forget that Mysterio buffs carry. No way this deck runs a shame. I refuse. I refuse to accept that this deck runs shame. Alright, you got me. Ah, oh, you bastard! What a good Shadow King. Uh, I was running Shadow King in my deck too. I, I, I was I was considering running Shadow King in this deck because it just it's so good into everything. I, I think Shadow King is a very underutilized card right now in the meta because Bishop, uh, Kitty Pride, Angela are all just running rampant right now. And sure, he's popular. Like, oh, uh, I think I think Shadow King is a very good card. Ah, damn him.